All right, Shalom, this is the brother Abadia from the GMS Houston camp, here with another lesson. I want to first start off giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through the Spirit, and peace and blessings unto the elect of the nation of Israel, which is us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, according to the Bible. The concept of the Bible it's very simple. This Bible is only for the Israelites. This is our book. And like I was saying, the concept of this Bible is very simple. And that is for us to learn righteousness and also to learn wickedness. Ultimately, through through experiencing life, through walking here on this planet Earth, you know, now I was I want to start this lesson with uh Second Corinthians eleven and three. It says, "But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, because with it, the serpent, which was a man, and um, which was really Esau, before he got the title Esau, the spear that's in the Esau, who was the forefather of the Edomites." The same is the same spirit that was in the serpent in the in the garden. Okay. And uh through through this lesson, you know, I'm gonna pull some precepts and it's gonna definitely the scriptures are gonna definitely prove prove that. Okay, that spirit that that was in the serpent. Um is the same spirit that's in Esau, the so called white man. And Esau is really a personification of of wickedness, of sin. You know, and uh, we gonna—I don't want to jump the gun. I got some scriptures that's gonna uh, highlight all these things. That Esau is um, the spirit that's in Esau is the same spirit that was in the serpent in the garden, and that Esau is the personification of sin. All right. And what did, the, what did the serpent do to Eve? He made things complicated. OK, because. They only knew Adam and Eve only knew the right way. OK, but when the serpent say, no, you can go and eat of the tree of knowledge of uh, of knowledge of good and evil. Then things got complicated. Life got begin to get complicated. OK, so let's read on. It says. I'm going to read it again. It says, but I fear at least by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. So your minds should be corrupted. From the simplicity that is in. Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Now, Psalms 40 and 7 says that Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book. It is written of him. OK. It actually reads, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Okay? And that's referring to our Lord, Yahweh Shai. So, when we look at these scriptures, when, once the Most High open up your mind to the understanding of this, of this Bible, the concept of it is very simple. Okay? Uh, uh, understanding righteousness and understanding wickedness and understanding that not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. That's the way you're, we're righteous. All the negative effects that it brings on our nation and ultimately on the whole planet. Great detrimental negative effects by not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Okay? Now, the Most High created, created both. The Most High created good and he created evil in other way another way you can put it he created righteousness and he created sin and let's prove it through the scriptures first i'm going to go to um isaiah 45 and 7 it says i form the light i create darkness i make peace i create evil i the lord 
do all these things. So the Most High creates, created both sides. He created the right-hand side, the positive side. He created the left-hand side, the negative side. Okay? Now let's go to get uh, Proverbs 16 and 4. It says, The Lord has made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. See, so the Most High did not only create righteousness, he created the wicked or wickedness, but right here is saying the wicked for the day of evil. Right. We had to experience like uh, the Apostle Gabor brings out all the time. And uh, he, you know, gives credit to uh, high priest Yaquab. Something that he always said was that uh, we had to learn wickedness or go through. I'm roughly paraphrasing uh, with the uh, how the Apostle Gabor brings it out. Um we had to go through wickedness or learn wickedness so that we can appreciate appreciate righteousness. When the kingdom comes, we will appreciate uh, uh, righteousness by seeing all the, the, the negative effects that wickedness brings upon our nation and also the, the whole earth, even all the nations of the earth, you know? And that's what it's all about, us getting an understanding of righteousness and wickedness. And that if we don't uphold righteousness, which if you don't uphold righteousness, then it means you sin. We sin. Okay? It's either or. And and all the, the, the problem that it, sin brings here on this planet, planet Earth. Now... From there, I want to get, uh, I got a few more precepts um, that I want to bring out before I get into some of the, some of the accounts that really highlight, some of the prime accounts that highlight righteousness versus sin or wickedness versus righteousness, okay? Evil versus good, okay? Positive versus negative, However you uh, want to say it. So from there, let me get this real quick. This is um, Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha 33 and verse uh, 14. It says, good is said against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner. And the sinner against the godly. That's ultimately what the Bible shows, displays, okay, through the two main characters of the Bible. The, uh, the, the uh, what do you call it? The main characters of the Bible, which is who? Jacob and Esau. The Israelites and the Edomites. Because and we're going to get some scriptures on it. Israel represents righteousness and Esau represents wickedness or sin. OK, it says. Um, verse 15, it says, so look upon all the works of the most high and there are two and two, one against another. OK. I got another precept. In the same book, Ecclesiasticus chapter 42. And uh, I'm starting verse 20 or 24. It says, all things are double one against another. And he, I'm sorry, and he has made nothing imperfect. One thing establishes, establishes the good of, a, of another. Let me read that again. I'm stumbling. So lock here. Uh, one thing establish it, the good of another and who shall be filled with beholding his glory. OK, so if the most high only created was only the author or the creator of righteousness. And, you know, as the so wacky tacky Christians believe and a lot of people believe on this earth that. Satan. 
is warring against the Most High, and He's responsible without the Most High having no uh, interference or having nothing to do with it. He's solely responsible for sin or wickedness that takes place on this earth. Okay, and that's not the case as we went through the scriptures. The Most High created Satan really through his son. His son, Yahweh created this dead bastard. Which is, uh, uh, the book of Job tells us that Satan is one of the sons of the Most High on the left hand side. So I had to take that, retract that statement, not because he is a son of the Most High. I said that bastard, <clears throat> but the Most High created him, created uh, Satan, and set up the, the, the order of the left side, and he set up the order of the right hand side. Right? And if he didn't, then that would make the Most High imperfect, and the Most High is perfect. Yahweh Shai told the 12 uh, uh, disciples, which became apostles, be ye perfect as the Father is perfect. Right? So that's the ultimate goal is for us to, which we're going to get through the new covenant, okay, is living in complete righteousness, meaning keeping the law, statutes, and commandments perfect. And at, the, and at the same time, we're going to have the supreme understanding of what wickedness is by going through, by breaking the law, statutes, and commandments, which uh, uh, led us into captivity under Satan, you know, which Satan operates through, through, uh, through Esau. Now, let's get some scriptures, like I said, that prime examples that highlight evil versus or let's just say righteousness versus sin okay and 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 lord willing edification can come out of this and let's, i'm just rolling with the spirit on these uh on these accounts you know so first we're gonna start with the account with cain and abel So we go to Genesis, the fourth chapter. And let's read from the first verse. It says, and Adam knew his, and Adam knew his, I'm sorry, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have begotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel and Abel was a keeper of of sheep but Cain was a tiller of the ground and in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord which is Yahweh and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering but Unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wrought, and his countenance fell. So, what does this show us? Reading this, Cain. I'm sorry, I said Cain. <laughs> Excuse me. Cain, he sinned, and Abel committed an act of righteousness, meaning he did an act that was according to the law. Abel did an act. I'm sorry, Cain did an act. That was against the law. Let me make sure I said that right. Abel did an act that was according to the law. Okay. And Cain did an act that was against the law. Okay. That's simply what this account uh, um, shows us, you know. Because with the most high requires a blood sacrifice. You can't bring a uh, fruit, uh, uh, offer a fruit onto the most high. See? Now, um, let's read on a little bit. It says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, which he wasn't created to do well, uh, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou do, does not uh, well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire 
and thou shall rule over him. So Esau or Cain, which is we're going to get to that account here in just a minute, is the reincarnation of uh, Esau. Or well, Esau is the reincarnation. Uh, Cain came back reincarnated, okay, through Esau. And Esau is in charge of perpetuating sin in the earth. Just, which is the so-called white man. Now let's get. I want to get uh, something on Jacob and Esau real quick. This is in the book of Romans chapter 9. And we're going to start at verse 10. It says. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that call it. So who is this talking about? It's talking about Jacob and Esau. Okay, Isaac and Rebekah birth Jacob and Esau. Verse 12. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? So we see the right here in this part of the chapter, the, um, the subject matter is about Jacob and Esau. Verse 14, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? Yahweh forbid. For he said unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. It's a lock here. Let me read that again. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of the most high that showeth mercy. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So what's that showing in this reading so far is that the most High raised up Esau and is allowing him to rule in his wickedness and great power, you know, cause Esau is ruling in wickedness and great power. And he, the most High allowed this or raised him up, so that when he take them down, the world is on, gonna know that only the supreme Yahweh, through his son Yahweh Shai, took this took uh, uh, took this could have done this by taking this man down, taking him out of power. Verse eighteen. Therefore, hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he harden it. Thou will say then unto me, Why does he yet find fault? For who has resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that replies against the Most High? Shall the thing form say to him that form it, Why hast thou made me thus? And that's what Esau does. Okay? Esau bucks up against the Most High. All right? Uh, um, but the answer is the thing can't, the most highest creations can't question him. Okay. And even if they do question him, so what? Everything's still going to go according to how the most high set it all up. Let's see. Uh, and the answer is, uh, No. Because it says, why hast thou made uh, me thus? So that we're not going to ask, the creations are not going to ask, ultimately, why, why did you make me like this? You know, you, and even if you do ask, the answer is is, is going to be because it's, it's Yahweh's will. 
because he created everything in balance and, and perfection. Let's read on. It says, uh, has not the pot of power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? So Jacob represents honor. Esau represents dishonor. In other words, Jacob represents righteousness and Esau represents sin. And uh, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop right there and we're going to get another uh, account in the scriptures. All right. From there, I would like to go to Matthew. Matthew chapter four. And we're going to start at verse uh, verse one. Right, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Then was Yahweh Shai led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he which is uh, Satan. He said, if thou be the son of the most high, command these stones be made bread. See, this, this Satan coming with his antics, okay? And what he, we could have did is just brought some food. Say, here, here, my friend, a righteous individual would say, seeing a man is, came, uh, is, came off a of fast and is hungry, all right, then you would give him some food. But what did Satan do? Satan said, if you be the son of the most high, turn these stones into bread. All right, uh, uh, verse four says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the most high. And what this is, what we reading is, is going to illustrate Righteousness, uh, um, using righteousness to combat evil or to combat sin. Okay. Verse five it says, "Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set at him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the son of the most high, cast thyself down. Uh, for it is written." He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, least at any time thou, sh least at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Yahweh shall say unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy power. Again, the devil taketh him up. And to see what Yahweh Shai is doing, he keeps combating the devil coming with his antics, okay? Coming with his wickedness with uh with the scriptures. Really with uh with righteousness. Alright, it says Again the devil taketh him up in into an exceeding high mountain. And showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto them, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now this is the the greatest sin you could uh commit, you know, outside of uh blaspheming the the, the Holy Spirit. Okay? Or it is really the greatest sin you commit. Not only sin you can't be forgiven for is uh, really for Israelites on this side is um, blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. But he's telling Yahweh Shai to break the first commandment. Which tells us not to worship any other power nor bow down. Let's let's get it. Exodus 20. I'll read it real quick. Let's read the first commandment. Exodus 20. Let me get the verse. All 
Okay. Verse 3, Exodus 20 and 3, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy power, I am a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. You see? So he was telling him to bow down and worship him. And if Yahweh did, he would give him all the kingdoms of the earth. So verse, uh, back in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, it says, Then Yahweh said unto him, or then said Yahweh unto him, Get then uh, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy power, and him only shall thou uh, serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. You see? So that was a an a, uh, example shown in the scriptures, a, a, a prime example of righteousness versus sin okay now like i said earlier in this uh lesson i want to bring out i want to bring out some scriptures that show that esau the same spirit that was in the serpent in the garden is the same spirit that's in esau okay and that esau is a personification of sin and i had some other scriptures i was going to bring out but um yeah for the sake of time i'm not going to bring them out let me bring out these last two scriptures and i'm gonna close this close this lesson now this is second thessalonians chapter chapter 2 and I'm going to start at verse 3 and read through through 9 but really you know what for the sake of time you know you have to read the whole chapter to get the, the context matter of fact let me go ahead and read it really got to start up to get to bring out the understanding uh, verse 3 it says let no man deceive you by any means that that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed who is this man of sin that's going to be revealed we're going to find out the son of perdition who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called god or that is worshiped so that he is as god sitteth in the temple of god showing himself that he is god and hands down through the process of elimination, that's talking about the so-called white men who are the Edomites that go back to their forefather Esau. By, you know, and they've showed that, that they're the man of sin who exalted themselves above the Most High by setting up that white image to represent who the world ignorantly know as Jesus. Okay? saying that's the son of the most high so if that's the son of the most high then the father would have to look the same way insinuating that the heavenly father is a so-called white man and his son is a so-called white man okay so now we didn't figure out who the who the man of sin is uh where's i going let me see, verse. And you know what? That really, I can really stop right there because that shows that Esau is a personification of sin because he's called the man of sin. He's all about perpetuating sin in the earth. That's it. Nothing else. Not even a little bit of righteousness. He is the man of sin. Now, I'm going to jump down to verse 9. It says, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan, 
with all power and signs and lying wonders. See, so it's telling you this man of sin, he's coming, uh, doing the bidding of Satan. Okay. Now, last scripture, this is in the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter. And I'm going to start at the, uh, the seventh verse. It says, and there was war in heaven. This time is approaching. Okay. A war in heaven, which is talking about when our Lord, Yahweh Shai, comes back with the chariots. The so-called white man and his military might, especially his Air Force, is going to attempt to fight against the Most High, the Most High by fighting against, you know, his son, the angels and the, uh, uh, and the chariots. So let's read it. It says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon ultimately represents the so-called white man. OK, it represents the Roman Empire. Okay, and uh, who was over the Roman Empire? The so-called white man was. America is the revised or the revised Roman Empire or the Roman Empire reincarnated. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there any place found anymore in heaven. Meaning this man is going to be taken out of rulership. The so-called white man would be taken out of power. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. You see? So we find out right here that the, the so-called white man Esau. Had the, the, that spirit is the same spirit that was in the, in the serpent in the garden. We're reading it right here. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. The man of deception, the devil. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And when that time is fulfilled, when that prophecy is fulfilled, then righteousness amongst Israel will, will be uh, seen on this, in this earth. Nothing but righteousness from the nation of Israel. Now the other nations, they're going to have to deal with sinning, breaking the law, statutes, and commandments, but not the Israelites. Okay? We're going to have a perfect understanding of what, of how to judge this earth in righteousness, which means according to the law, and have an under and appreciate it from going through the detrimental effects of, of sin. You know, so with that, I'm going to close this lesson out. Uh, didn't mean to make it this long. But uh, I guess that's just the spirit. Once again, I want to give all praises. Well, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the spirit. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through the spirit. And peace and blessings on to the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom.